As you probably know, the covert narcissist is not represented in the DSM, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Psychiatry. So clinicians often don't know how to recognize the covert types. Now we've talked about that on this channel. We've talked about how the NPD definition of narcissistic personality disorder really looks a lot like the overt type, but how to explain the covert types. So lately I've had some revelations on the covert types and I wanna talk about two different types of covert narcissists that you might know and why they're so dangerous. Now, I don't think that the covert type is more aggressive than the overt type. I think that's probably very similar, but what I think makes them more dangerous is because of how hidden they are, which means how much more they get away with. The more obvious, the more overt it is, the much less that person is going to get away with. Therefore, the covert type is much more dangerous to your sanity because there's so much cognitive dissonance going on there and because other people are gonna have a really hard time seeing it. This is why the covert types can get away with literally murder, genocide, war crimes, because they disguise themselves so well. So both of these types of covert narcissists could be the so-called cerebral type. They could fit into either one of these categories and keep in mind that some of them might actually show signs of both of these kinds of covert narcissists. The first type is the victim. This is the one that people refer to as the so-called vulnerable type of narcissist. And one of the experts that I interviewed, Dr. Todd Grande, last year, said that he thinks the covert narcissist, or he called it the vulnerable narcissist, is really a combination of BPD and NPD, which is the borderline personality disorder and narcissistic personality disorder. I'll link that video up here for you if you haven't seen that yet. Last year, I also did a video on the victim narcissist. So if you haven't seen that one, I'll put that up here for you. Now, the thing about the victim covert narcissist is that there is usually actually an element of real victim, but it's both victim and manipulator. They're not a regular victim. The victim's source of supply is going to be the status that they get as a victim. They are the career victims, the victims for life, the victims who love to carry their victim card all around. They're also going to get supply from your sympathy. They like to extract sympathy from people to get supply, and they're also going to get supply through your resources. That could be your physical resources, like your money, your belongings. That could also be, and always is, your emotional resources. They will drain you dry of your emotional resources. Essentially, the victim covert narcissist is an emotional terrorist. When you walk into the room and you have a certain mood and emotional state and they have a different one, you are forced to enter their emotional state or they will do something or say something to make you feel that way. They will control the emotional environment of the home, the relationship, the social group, etc. Their blame will go out towards those who don't rescue, save, or enable them and their victim behaviors. The victim type will use the Darvo tactic to play a very convincing victim. They will blame you for being a bad person if you don't do what they want, if you don't take responsibility for them, if you don't rescue them. They will use lots of crocodile tears for manipulation purposes. The victim type of covert narcissist manipulates help from other people instead of taking responsibility for their own life. They will idealize you as the savior, as the hero, as someone perfect, as the only one who cares about them. Now this victim type loves to masquerade as the empath. When you hear people going on and on about how they're such an empath, be careful. This type is most often confused with a codependent because when you first meet this victim covert narcissist, they're going to appear to be very accommodating to you, to what you want. They're gonna look like a people pleaser at the beginning, but that will very quickly change. 
They are the master of guilt tripping and extorting resources of others. Their entitlement is going to look for your time, your energy, your resources, a relationship with you, your help in some way. And their gaslighting is going to sound a lot like pity ploys, guilt tripping, helplessness, and forms of making you feel bad if you don't help or rescue them or do whatever they want. Now the second type of covert narcissist is the hero. This is the sophisticated version. So the first one was the victim, the vulnerable version. This one is the hero, the sophisticated version. This form of covert narcissist seems to overlap with psychopathy, which is the factor one psychopathy, the really charming, or the factor two psychopathy, which they refer to as antisocial personality disorder, what we lay people call sociopaths. This one is going to appear strong, brave, charming, smooth, dignified, and elegant. They're going to get their supply through playing the hero, playing the savior, through power and control, through admiration, and through the thrill of the con. The hero covert narcissist is a master of disguise. They have a way of looking dignified, humanitarian, generous, altruistic on the outside. They will blame others who serve as scapegoats for their crimes, as well as others who didn't accept their help or do whatever they wanted. The Darvo of the hero type is a bit different. They're the type that's always running the smear campaigns in the background and very covert, sophisticated ones disguised as concern or worry. They really only play victim when their back is against the wall. They're not used to having to play victim. They usually rely on that face of sophistication and dignity and humanitarianism. This type sadistically acts concerned or worried or like they care about you in order to extract information. And they're often extremely perverted. The hero type will manipulate by offering this help. And this help always comes with strings attached. It induces a sense of debt in the target. They'll also manipulate you by acting like the good person that couldn't possibly be who you think they are. The hero type will idealize you as so amazing and no one else can see just how amazing you are. This type loves to masquerade as the savior, the leader, the guru. They'll often show all their photos of all their charity events and look what a good person I am. They're the master of creating IOUs and they're most confused with someone humble, someone dignified, someone humanitarian. For example, a philanthropist. On the surface, wow, what a generous philanthropist who cares so much about the health of people around the world that they donate all these vaccines and then <gasps> accidentally sterilized hundreds of thousands of Africans. Now that's the part we don't talk about. Their sense of entitlement is they believe they can use you at their will for whatever they want, whenever they want, because you owe them since they helped you. The hero type will use gaslighting by playing dumb, by minimizing their knowledge, by minimizing their involvement. They'll often use terms like, I don't recall, and when you call them out on anything, they love to use qualifiers like, I have so many years doing this and I have never had a problem before. And they'll also continually remind you of their good deeds in order to gaslight you out of acknowledging and fully seeing that this is an abusive person. So this is how I see two forms of covert narcissist. I was really struggling over that for a while because I recognize there are those vulnerable types who really look like the victim and have an element of manipulator. And then on the other hand, there's also this super sophisticated stealth type that's in the upper echelon of society and power circles. So they're, they're really two different characters. They're not the same, but they're both covert in that they're very hidden. They're not that overt, very obvious type. So I would love to know what you think. Have you met types like this? Have you met the victim? Have you met the hero? 
And if there's anything you'd like to add to this conversation, I look forward to reading your comments below. I hope that this video helped you. If it did, give it a like or let me know. I'm sending you a big hug.